Ilya Kaminsky was born in the former Soviet Union in the city of Odessa. He lost most of his hearing at the age of four after a doctor misdiagnosed mumps as a cold. His family was granted political asylum by the United States in 1993, and they settled in Rochester, New York. So there are some similarities in this unique situation for a child who ends up being a translator for parents, and Ocean Vuong just spoke about that. There's some parallels here. After his father's death in 1994, Ilya began to write poems in English. He explained in an interview with the Adirondack Review, I chose English because no one in my family or any friends knew it. No one I spoke to could read what I wrote. I myself did not know the language. It was a parallel reality, an insanely beautiful freedom. It still is. Ilya went on to earn a BA in political science at Georgetown University and a doctorate in law from the University of California's Hastings College of the Law. He co-founded Poets for Peace, which sponsors poetry readings across the globe to support relief work, and he has edited In Posse Review and Poetry International. He has also worked as a law clerk for San Francisco Legal Aid and the National Immigration Law Center. More recently, he worked pro bono as the court-appointed special advocate for orphan children in Southern California. You can imagine, or maybe can't imagine, what that involved. He has taught at San Diego State University and currently holds the Bourne Chair in Poetry at Georgia Institute of Technology in Atlanta. He's the author of the chapbook Musica Humana and the book Dancing in Odessa, which won the Tupelo Press Dorset Prize, the American Academy of Arts and Letters Metcalf Award, and a Forward Magazine's Best Poetry of the Year Award. He, that book has been translated into more than 20 languages. Traveling Musicians, published in 2007, is a collection of his poems originally written in Russian. Ilya has also co-edited and co-translated many other books, including the Echo Anthology of International Poetry, Dark Elderberry Branch, which is poems of Marina Svetaeva, and three more books from Tupelo, This Lamentable City by Paulina Barskova, Gossip and Metaphysics, which is Russian modernist poems and prose, and God in the House, Poets Talk About Faith. He also curated the eight-volume Poets of the World series produced by the Poetry Foundation. His new collection is Deaf Republic, 2019, which has a plot as a novel might have a plot, and parts of the sequence are constructed like a puppet play. Deaf Republic opens in an occupied country at a time of political unrest. When soldiers break up a protest, they kill a deaf boy, Petya, and the gunshot becomes the last thing the citizens of this country hear. All have gone deaf, and their descent becomes coordinated by sign language. The story follows the private lives of townspeople encircled by public violence. A newly married couple, Alfonso and Sonia, expecting a child. The brash Mama Galia, instigating the insurgency from her puppet theater. And Galia's girls, heroically teaching signs by day and by night, luring soldiers one by one to their deaths behind the curtain. The book's publisher describes this as, quote, at once a love story, an elegy, and an urgent plea. Ilya Kaminsky's long-awaited deaf republic confronts our time's vicious atrocities and our collective silence in the face of them. If you've heard Ilya recite his poems, you've never forgotten the experience. And for newcomers among us, welcome to this moment. And welcome, where is he, Ilya Kaminsky. Thank you so much. Can you hear me though? Good, I'm glad some of us can. How about now? Well, okay. Thank you, Ocha, for this absolutely beautiful reading. Your reading so was very beautiful. Thank you. Um, and thank you, Jim, for your really kind words. Uh, I, I think I've known Jim for almost 20 years now, and uh, I'm always inspired by him. 
And I'm very grateful for all his help over the years, including with this book. Thank you. Um, having said that, I'm going to read some poems. As you have noticed by now, I speak with a very heavy Russian accent. So hopefully by the end of the 24 hours that we'll spend together, we will all also speak with a very heavy Russian accent. <laughs> uh, but for now, in case you're unable to follow, I hope you have handouts. Um, here are a few more over there if you want one, okay? You may need them. I'm going to read about three poems. Two of them are very short and one is rather long which is, for the most part, the first act of Death Republic. Um, just so you know, Death Republic begins in a time of crisis when a pregnant woman and her husband see the soldier shoot and kill the young deaf boy, and the whole town protests by refusing to hear the authorities, and protest is coordinated by sign language. Okay? Can you hear me? We live it happily during the war. We live it happily during the war. And when they bombed other people's houses, we protested, but not enough. We opposed them, but not enough. I was in my bed. Around my bed, America was fallen. Invisible house, by invisible house, by invisible house, I took a chair outside and watched the sun. In the sixth month of a disastrous rain, in a house of money, in a street of money, in a city of money, in a country of money, our great country of money, we forgive us, live it happily during the war. The Republic, gunshot. Our country is a stage. When soldiers march into town, public assemblies are officially prohibited. But today, Neighbors flock to the piano music from Sony and Alfonso's puppet show in Central Square. Some of us have climbed up in the trees. Others hide behind benches and telegraph posts. When Peter, the deaf boy, in a front row sneezes, the surgeon puppet collapses, shrieking. He stands up again, snorts, shakes his fist at the laughing audience. The army jeep swerves into the square, disgorging its servant surgeon. Disperse immediately! Disperse immediately. The puppet mimics in a wooden falsetto. Everyone freezes, except Petya, who keeps giggling. Someone claps a hand over his mouth. The surgeon turns toward the boy, raising his finger. You! You, the puppet, raises a finger. Sonia watches her puppet. The puppet watches the surgeon. The surgeon watches Sonia and Alfonso. But the rest of us watch Peter Limbaugh gather all the speed in his throat and launch it at the surgeon. The sound we do not hear lifts the gas of the voice. As soldiers march, Alfonso covers the boy's face with a newspaper. Fourteen people, most of us strangers, what son I knew by Petya shot in the middle of the street. She picks up his spectacles, shining like two gods, balances them on his nose, observes this moment, how it Convulses. Snow falls, and the ducks run into the streets like manics. Fourteen of us watch. Sonia kisses his forehead. Her shot a hole, torn in the sky. It shimmers apart, but she's portless. We see 
In Sonia's open mind, the nakedness of the whole nation. She stretched aside beside the little snowman napping in the middle of the street. As speaking up, it spelled the country runs. Alfonso in snow. You're alive. I wish for to myself, therefore something in you lives, something that runs down the street, falls, fails to get up, I run, etc. With my legs and my hands behind my pregnant wife, etc. Down the Wasinka Street I run, it only takes a few minutes, etc. to make a man. Toughness and insurgency begins. Our country woke up next morning and refused to hear soldiers. In the name of Peter, we refuse. At 6 a.m., when soldiers compliment the girls in the alleyway, the girls slide by, pointing to their ears. At 8, the bakery door is shut and soldiers Ivanov's face, though he is their best customer. At then, Mama Gale chokes, no one hears you, and the gates of soldiers parks. By 11 a.m., arrests begin. Our hearing does not weaken, but something silent in us strangers. After curfew, families of the arrested hand homemade puppets out of their windows. The streets are empty, but for the squeaks of strings and the tap tap against the buildings of wooden fist and fit in the ears, in the ears of the town, snow falls. Alfonso stands answerable. My people, you were really something fucking fun on the morning of the first arrest. Our men, once frightened, bound to their beds, now stand up like human mass. Daphne passes through us like a police whistle. Here the night testify. Each of us comes home, shuts at the wall, at the stove, at the refrigerator, let himself forgive me. I was untarnished with you. Life, to you I stand. Answerable, I run, etc. With my legs and my hands, etc. I run down the bus in Castrida, etc. Whoever listens, thank you for the father on my tongue. Thank you for our arguments that ends. Thank you for Daphne's Lord, such fire from a match you never lit. That map of porn, an open and fast. I watch him see certain things. That a boy they carry and fire in his mouth, his face and the outfit. That map of porn, an open and fast. It is the air. Something in the air wants us too much. The earth is still. The devil guards it to come with sandwiches. This first day, soldiers examine the ears of bartenders, accountants, soldiers, the wicked zins, sons, thanks to soldiers. They tear Gora's wife from her bed like a door of a bus. Observe this moment, how it convulses. The body of the boy. Lies on the asphalt like a pepper clip. The body of the boy lies on the asphalt like the body of a boy. I touch the balls, those the pools of the house. And I stare up for this. I do not know why I am alive. We tiptoe the city, 
So, and die. Between cities and gardens, and all the iron gates, be courageous, we say. But no one is courageous as a sound we do not hear lift the birds of the water. Before the war, we made a child. Before the war, we made a child. I kissed a woman whose frock serves the neighbors. She had a mole and half show, which she displayed like a medal for bravery. Her trembling lips went come to bed. Her head, whether falling in the middle of the conversation, went come to bed. I walked in my barber shop of those, yes. I zebrated her off to bed on the chair of my hairy arms, but parted lips, but bite my parted lips, lying under the cool sheets, Sonia, the things we did. So they are saying with us. So they say with us. They find as a crowd of women flees inside the nostrils of your church. May God have a photograph of this in the piazza's bright air. So the struck beat his spine, and his head bangs the stairs side, fills her my wife's shorn the shape of our child. So the struck beat up the stairs, and homeless dark. Then, as philosophers understand everything and bark and bark, I, now on a bridge with no camouflage of speech, a body wrapping the body of my pregnant wife tonight. We don't die, and don't die. The earth is still. A helicopter, I boss, my wife, an earth. A man cannot flip a finger at the sky. Because each man is already a fender flipped at the sky. Lullaby. Little daughter, rain water, snow and branches protect you. Whitewash it was, and neighbor's hand so. Child of my apples, little lord of six pounds. My white hair keeps you asleep, lit. While the child sleeps, Sonia undresses. She scraps me until I spit soapy water, big to smile. A man to smell better than his country. Such is the silence of a woman. Who speaks again, silence, no one. Silence, it was moving sad to speak. She throws my shoes and glasses in the air. I'm a deaf people and I have no country but a bust up and an infant and a marriage bed. Soaping together, that is sacred to us. Washing each other's shoulders. You can fuck anyone. But with whom can you sit in water? Four young compartments. Four young compartments. My body runs in a realm of street. My clothes in a peel and paste. I look for a man who looks exactly like me. To give him my Sonia, my name, my short, it has begun. Neighbors climb the trolleys at the fish market, breaking all their moments in half. Trolleys barks like intestines in the sun. Pavel shots, I am so fucking beautiful, I cannot stand it. Two boys still holding tomato sandwiches. Hop in the trolley slice, so the same as their faces, their ears. I can't find my wife, where I is my pregnant wife. I, a body, an adult male. I wait to explode like a hand grenade. It has begun. 
I see the blue canary as my country, big breadcrumbs from each citizen's eyes, big breadcrumbs from my neighbor's hair, the snow leaves the earth and falls straight up as it should to have a country so important to run in taboos, in the streetless, in the love it one says one should. The blue canary of my country runs in the woods, in the streetlights, in the love it was. The blue canary of my country watches the lights as I run and fall. As you go out, watch passing the season. Do not know. They are evidence of happiness. In a time of war, each is a ripped out document of a laugher. Watch, God, that have something to tell that not even they can hear. If you climb a roof in the center square of this bandit out city, you will see one neighbor gives a cigarette, another gives a dog, a pint of sunlit beer. You will find me, God, like a damn pigeon speak. I am packing every which way an astonishment. Fine squad. I'm balkans, sunlight. I'm hopeless, sunlight. And our lips. Today, no one is shooting. A girl cuts her hair with imaginary scissors. The scissors in sunlight, her hair in sunlight. Another girl nicks a pair of shoes from a sleeping soldier, scour it with light. A soldier's wake and gape at us, gaping at them. What do they see? Tonight, they shot 50 women at Lerner Street. I sit down to write and tell you what I know. A child learns the world by putting it in her mouth. A girl becomes a woman and a woman hurt. Body, they blame you for all things. And they seek in the body, for does not leave. In the party. The townspeople watch them take a phone. Now, each of us is a witness stand. Basinka watches us, watch for soldiers, the old phone several beans the on the sidewalk. We let them take him. All of us, cowards, what we don't say, we carry in our suitcases, our coat pockets, our nostrils, across the street. They wash him with fire hoses, first he screams and he stops so much sunlight. A t-shirt falls off a clothes line, and an old man stops, picks it up, presses it to his face. Neighbors. Lie not to watch him throw on the sidewalk like a muddy lock, Tada! In so much sunlight, each of us is a witness stand. They take Alfonso, and no one stands up. Our silence stands up for us. All right, let me do one more poem and then I'll be out of your hair, okay? Uh, this poem will bring you a lot closer home. It's called In the Time of Peace. And I have to thank Carolyn and Patricia Smith uh, because I wrote this poem right when Trump started his uh, drama with the rest of us. And I was in UK and I couldn't quite figure out how to articulate it. 
And I heard Carolyn and Patricia talk about it, and so I came over and wrote a draft of this poem. Okay? It's called In a Time of Peace. In heaven, our part 40 sun is. I once found myself in a peaceful country. I watched neighbors open their phones to watch a cop demanding a man's driver license. And when the man reaches for his wallet, the cop shoots into the car window. Shoots. It is a peaceful country. We pocket our phones and go to the dentist to pick up the kids from school to buy shampoo and bathe. Ours is a country in which a boy shot by police lies on a pavement for hours we see in his open mouth the nakedness of the whole nation. We watch, watch others, watch. The body of a boy lies on the pavement, exactly like the body of a boy. It is a peaceful country, and it clips our citizens' bodies effortlessly. The way the president's wife dreams her toyness. All of us still have to do the hard work of dentist appointments, of remembering to make a summer salad, basil, tomatoes, it is a joy, tomatoes, and a little salt. This is a time of peace. I don't hear gunshots. But watch birds splash over the backyards of the suburbs. How bright is the sky? Are the avenues fields? Are they taxes? How bright is the sky? Forgive me.